content for the next three events for Halo Infinite have been leaked, as well as data showcasing there is still a major difference between mouse and keyboard and controller. You want to know more? Well, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again giving you our Halo informational and news video. So what we have going on for today's video guys, we have a little bit of a leak when it comes to the next three events for Halo Infinite. Showcasing a bit of a theme when it comes to the content coming with it, as well as showing some statistical differences between top tier keyboard and mouse and top tier controller players, which are very interesting, which I think is very important to take a look at when it comes to the balance of these two input devices. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos, make sure you tap that like button as it greatly helps out the video and channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay up to date with everything going on with Halo as a ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, well, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. So this graph that you're looking at right here showcases the data points of some of the top players on each input device. Controller versus keyboard and mouse has been a huge point of discussion within the Halo community and it looks like it's still going to be lingering on quite a bit longer. As you can see, the top controller players have a much higher overall accuracy for the top 100 controller players compared to the top 100 keyboard and mouse players in Halo Infinite. I believe it kind of plays into this video that I posted up on Twitter during the flight process of me playing on mouse and keyboard. You can see how I'm just missing my shots left and right on this Spartan level difficulty uh, bot right here. And it kind of blew up the internet a little bit for the Halo Twitter where I ended up this video alone. Ended up accumulating just over 36,000 views and uh, you know had very many Halo pros commenting on it as well saying like, the strength speed is pretty difficult and like these 1v1 encounters on mouse and keyboard where no aim assist is available for that input device, these strafing maneuvers can be quite difficult. Now I do feel like they might have nerfed it a little bit when it comes to the strafe speed as it doesn't feel so difficult now. Now this could just be user error, me just understanding the gameplay a little bit differently this time around. Also changing up my settings, utilizing my tips and trick video on best settings kind of stuff kind of really helped out with my aim a lot with the game. Though a very interesting point that's actually kind of gets shown within this data as well. That the top 100 keyboard or mouse players who only play against other keyboard or mouse players, that's what the person who created this data su suggested, that the 50 percentile of controller only players, really actually the mouse keyboard players are better. So you actually can do better with mouse and keyboard compared to controller. But again, I think this kind of comes down to more just general game skill. Because even with the lower 50 percent tile when it comes to controller versus mouse and keyboard, there still is roughly the same amount of difference. It's a little bit shorter when it comes to this, but that's because the lower accuracy you get, the less difference there's going to be. Because rarely are you going to see any data points beyond 30 below 35 percent. But either way that you look at this, controller does seem to have a bit of an advantage on mouse and keyboard when you're playing at the same level of difficulty players and the way that the skill based matchmaking works right now in Halo that it's going to match you against very tightly close uh, skilled players and so they're, you're going to feel that difference especially within the quick play playlist. You can kind of start seeing why with the rank settings that they decided to divide up with like just keyboard, mouse, just controller, and mixed as well. I'm glad mixed is definitely there. It certainly needs it with the open setting because you got to allow people to play together, man. And you can tell that 343 really did try to even out the differences between these input devices. I mean, we're talking maybe like 5-10% differences on overall skill when it comes to accuracy. But that really does make a difference, especially when you're at a higher level of gameplay. The hard thing is, I think with 343 to try to balance this out properly is that Halo has a very distinct feel and then when you try to mess with that to try to balance it out they won't feel like Halo anymore and Halo has been fundamentally designed from the ground up since day one with the controller in mind. And so do you ruin the core experience of the controller feel to make sure you can balance out the keyboard and mouse feel as well? I mean, there are Twitch streamers out there like Active and many others who play strictly mouse and keyboard and can certainly hold their own. A big thing about Halo is also about being able to have proper game sense and awareness. Positioning plays a big factor when it comes to this as well. It's not strictly just aiming and accuracy and stuff like that. It's not everything that makes a good Halo player. It's probably the smallest percentage. Because you can see with higher skilled keyboard and mouse players, they are doing better than lower skilled controller players. So there are certainly other factors in play when it comes to accuracy. I have a feeling that there's just always gonna be this difference between the input devices. It's impossible, nearly impossible I would say, to truly balance them out because there's always gonna be just distinct differences between the two because you can't really give mouse keyboard aim assist because then that makes controller 
obsolete, but you can't take away control aim assist from controllers because that makes controllers obsolete to mouse and keyboard. Maybe some fine tuning and adjustments when it comes to the aim assist on controller could help even these numbers out a little bit more. But this is certainly going to be a developing story. This is something that 343 needs a lot of data on to make sure they make a proper decision when it comes to changing the game on these kind of statistics. So if we see anything else come out from this, I'll let you guys know on this channel 100%. Next on a bit of news, guys, we had a leak on some of the content coming in for the next few events coming for Halo Infinite. Guys, you know that we do have the Fracture event. We're having three other events of Winter Contingency, Cyber Showdown, and Tactical Ops as well, all providing their own bits of unique customization. My assumption that the Winter Contingency most likely happened in December because this recent leak showcases some really unique customization. Now, for the sake of saving my channel, I will not show this content because I don't want to lose my entire stuff because this is a bit of a leak when it comes to stuff showing up in here. But what I'm seeing for Winter Contingency, Cyber Showdown, as well as the Tactical Ops events, they look to have really short kind of battle passes tied to these as well, about like 10 ranks. Where there could be more stuff showcased within at this as well. And they do when these events do come around, I'll let you guys know on this channel, but definitely the winter contingency is definitely having much more of a holiday feel to it. As you can see with this preview, there's kind of a bit of a kind of, you know, red, green, white kind of holiday style when it comes to the armor coatings, as well as some of the weapon coatings as well. We're seeing that within this leak, as well as some new emblems, nameplates as more. Uh, we did show a previous leak where it was also leaked that some of the helmet that has a bit of like a snowman kind of effect to it. Uh, it's not showing up within this rank here. There could be more ranks. I assume it'd probably only be about 10 tiers because it seems more kind of like a temporary kind of battle pass thing. Maybe this snowman helmet might show up within the shop, which is, seems to be a kind of a common theme now, right, right now with Halo Infinite. All the really cool stuff seems to be kind of showing up in the shop, which is not optimal, I would say. I would like to be, but so far, it doesn't really look like, like there's really much cool stuff to kind of grind through when it comes to the first Winter Contingency event. Though for the next event, the Cyber Showdown does show that it actually has some pretty cool customization tied to its battle pass as well. Showcasing a new stance, some new emblems and things like that with uh, obviously with like the neon visor and like the cool mohawk looking thing and like a new coating for an AI and things like that. But again, more XP grants, more challenge swaps, which is not exactly the greatest of options for a battle pass though the last one that we're looking at here tactical ops has a lot more of the similar kind of things we do see the return of the mark 5 helmet coming in here as well but a really cool thing there's an emblem right at the end a nameplate that says lone wolf which gives me the feeling that free for all will most likely be coming back with tactical ops as obviously lone wolf was the original name for the free for all mode back during the bungee days which i am sorely missing free for all guys i really want to play that mode so badly it's one of the things with halo infinite right now that like the modes offerings it's a bit minimal it looks like the armor coating that we're missing right now within halo infinite the scorpion punch which we've seen throughout a lot of the pre-release material will be tied to the tactical ops event which is in the early part of the event battle pass so be very easy to unlock Ideally, as long as the challenges aren't too crazy, but I certainly cannot wait for those events to come around. I will say, looking at these leaked battle passes that we have for these upcoming events, which is one is cool thing that we're gonna get more events. But my feeling from checking out these leaked battle passes, uh, one is that they're okay. Like you get some uh, decent customization tied with it, but I feel like a lot of the really cool stuff might be tied to the store, which. I understand like the way microtransactions work within Halo Infinite is that like you're not supposed to own everything because there's gonna be so much content out there. You just kind of pick and choose what you want. It's one of the growing pains I feel like the community's kind of going with with this game right now that traditionally with Halo, we've been able to collect everything in the game, which has been super rewarding and kind of gives you that carrot at the end of the stick. But 343 is kind of modeling the microtransactions we've seen from like Call of Duty, what we've seen from Fortnite, from Apex Legends and things like that, that you're not supposed to have literally every possible bit of customization within the game you're supposed to just kind of have what you like but a big thing about customization is making yourself stand out amongst the crowd and that's where that personality kind of comes through and right now the way that people are unlocking things within the battle passes that uh you don't really get the sense of uniqueness you go like oh, okay that guy just unlocked that core or something like that this is one of the growing pains with the game just coming out right that with this new system that people are going to be kind of unlocking the exact same thing at about the same pace as well i've been starting to see some more variety it's been pretty cool to watch and so you can hopefully as we get some more customization and some more people get time to grind out the battle pass and get some more battle passes coming in as well that we get some more unique content that people will definitely start standing out more and that monotony that we've been kind of experiencing with customization well 
lighten up a bit. If you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I can link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. Thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.